Hey everyone, just before we start the podcast, I'd like to make a couple of announcements. Some festivals that I will be attending at with my artwork for sale. That's right. So I'll be selling my original artwork, prints, sketch cards, stickers, and even on-site commissions. So if you visit my table and there isn't anything in particular that you'd like, I will be doing customized sketches. Um, so yeah, that will be... So the first one will be April 23rd at the Charlottesville High Arts Cannabis Festival. And then I'll actually be coming back in May uh, on the 27th until the 29th uh, for the Charlottesville Arts Festival. Now, I do want to clarify for that festival, my table will be set up on that Friday, but I actually won't be in attendance uh, until the 28th and the 29th. Okay, and uh, also I'll be doing demos throughout those days. So I'm really excited. And uh, yeah, if you are residing in or anywhere around Charlottesville, you can find me at those two festivals. Mark your calendars. I hope to see you guys there. Now let's start the countdown. Yeah, please excuse the shades. My, my left eye, something was going on with it yesterday. And it's just, it's, it's all like red right now. So well, and I thought you were just trying to one up me. No, no. You know, I mean, it'd be one thing if I was high and both my eyes are red. Cause there have been plenty of episodes out there like that, but no, it's just, it just, it's distracting for me at least. So I hope these shades won't be too distracting for you. It's just. It doesn't really change anything. I've spoken to people in class saw before. <laughs> you were talking to a what? I've spoken to people who've worn glasses before. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, all right. So let me uh, get through all the... Yeah, I guess we're just ready to start. I'm going to bang this out. What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Rated G. I'm your host, G. Derado. And I have another special guest for you this week. But before we get into all of that... I would like to welcome any potential new listeners and viewers tuning into this podcast. Welcome to the show. This is a, a podcast where I sit down and have conversations with fellow artists, creators, and entrepreneurs, just having, uh, just sharing honest thoughts and perspectives around creativity and life. So if you enjoy this content, please be sure to subscribe, whether if you are listening on podcast or if you are watching via YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to actually build that channel up with some more podcasts and art, um, art videos. Um, so like, subscribe, all that good jazz to get me out there in the algorithm. Also, be sure to check out the show descriptions where I'll be providing links in case you would like to continue to follow myself or the featured guests on the show. And um, yeah, let's go. So with me here today is a fellow podcaster. Uh, We met through a mutual friend. And um, yeah, this is is technically our third conversation together. Uh, I've had the pleasure on being on his podcast that he hosts, which is called Geek Talk with Tyler. And it was a lot of fun, and I was uh, very pleased to and, and flattered that he wanted me on there. So, please welcome for the first time on Rated G, Tyler Brooke. Hey, G, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so if you don't mind, um, sort of recapping how it is like how it is that we end up we are here today uh you know as i said we met through a mutual friend rick man um uh, that we to- did um he uh, sent me um the episode you were in i checked that out i figured wow this guy and rick man really have a good dynamic figured see if he'd want a spot on my show or me on his turns out it worked way for both of us absolutely yeah i was i was curious um just to uh, um, yeah, to poke your brain and ask you, you know, what, what was it that, uh, initially wanted you initially, you wanted me to have on your podcast? Um, you know, cause I, I mean, I honestly, I, you know, besides knowing that, you know, Rick, I mean, I had no idea if, uh, you know, I wasn't sure if you 
tuned in a little bit into my podcast with him or if you came across my my artwork first i wasn't sure so i wasn't you know i was curious as to um you know what was it about my, me that you know you thought would fit for your podcast and uh, again i was very flattered so thank you for that I had a lot of fun um yeah no problem um i'm looking for other podcasters mostly for my show so not only can i engage with them but also get the chance to uh, be on my on their show and uh, you know, really try to get my name out there. And for those of you that didn't catch the podcast name, it's called Geek Talk with Tyler. There I've spoken to many guests, um, other podcasters, artists, even some famous people like uh, Ken Weisselman and Greg Wiseman. Okay. Yeah, see, I wish I knew name, like uh, you know, more familiar with names, but uh, unfortunately I am the type of person where I need a face or I need to see the work to identify with the name <laughs> well you're not probably well, if you're not familiar with the men then you're most likely familiar with their work yeah you ever see uh, thomas the tank engine or teletubbies okay enough said yeah okay yeah that was uh, ken weisselman okay now you ever see gargoyle spectacular oh. spider-man young oh, yeah. justice witch or even star wars rebels star wars yeah yeah I'm trying to think because I get Star Wars, Star Wars Rebels and the other show mixed up, but I have watched a little bit of, yeah, I have watched a little bit of that. So that's who, or that's what he worked on. Uh, yeah. Although with Gargoyles is his real, yeah. is, um, is his baby in a sense. Mm. Nice. Well, I mean, yeah, the, you know, you and I were nineties kids, so I definitely grew up watching gargoyles and um yeah what of uh what a underrated show but um well, know, it's a classic it's very, well that's the thing um disney's known for cutesier and cuddlier content as far as tv shows go we have gummy bears uh we have tailspin rescue rangers ducktales they're all cutesy for the whole family to enjoy Whereas Gargoyles took a darker, more serious approach because, yeah. to quote Greg Wiseman, everything had to be edgy in the 90s. We had the X-Men animated series, Batman the animated series, um, Spider-Man the animated series. Pretty much the entirety of the DCAU, for that matter, was edgy. Yeah. No, I agree. Um, you know, it kind of makes me think about... Um, Invader Zim. That was on Nickelodeon of all networks. It was. That was more of a 2000s thing. It was. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. This yeah is honestly, I really don't think that was edgy. It was I mean, cute. I, it was funny, but not really edgy. I think it was edgy all the above, actually. I mean, it's uh, maybe not edgy, but uh, just the way they uh, um, portrayed like the human race is just hilarious to me. I yeah. see if anything that's really more of a satire. Yeah. Because um, a lot of the times, aliens are much more smarter than the humans. And as far as aliens go, Zim is not one of the smartest. And I'm getting that luck. And here's why. He's more of a short-term thinker. He doesn't always think things through. Had he the potential for his long-term thinking situation to match his intellect in terms of technology, he would have conquered the Earth years ago. Yeah, yeah. Well... Let me, let, I should point out, because uh, I, f I forget which episode and I don't remember the episode name, but there is one when he comes across these two other aliens that were trying to hide, uh, hijack the planet. Well, not, no, I, not hijack the planet, but I think they were trying to kidnap him. They were just two other idiots. No, I, I know what you're talking about. It's yeah, that um, episode that, that, that it was essentially, um, I guess, kind of pays homage to the collector from Marvel Comics. Where they go around and collect different races. Yeah, but I just I think it's just again like how you're saying, you know, like aliens like these, at least with these uh, particular races, alien races. These ones, even though they, they have the advanced technology, but they're also idiotic, which is I just I love that. I guess that's like kind of giving the a two year old to the keys to a uh, to a limo or something. It's like. Yeah. The baby knows what to do, but does it really know what to do? Yeah. Well, not even that. It's just like, uh, I mean, <laughs> I, feel like I feel like we can go deep on this. But I think it's just like, 
it's just everything else that they do, like, you know, sure, like they, you know, Zim has like these cool vehicles and like robots and shit, but it's just like when it comes Honestly, to his logic, um, it's like, <laughs> where's the logic in that? <laughs> well, it's like, you ever see Ben 10 Omniverse? No, I know Ben 10, but I don't, I've never watched it. Right, well, there's the it. two aliens that are the same race as Grey Matter from one of Ben 10's original aliens. Um, they're smart. They can build shit. They can figure shit out, but they don't think long term. Right. Like one of the humans, uh, I think it was Grandma Max, like, oh, can you build an exit way for us? Yeah, they build an exit way, but it's only eight inches tall, about as tall as the Galvin race usually is. Mm. Like, <sighs> <I> mean, they <laughs> built a door, but it's like, you, you couldn't think that through. Yeah, well, that's, well, that's the comedy of it, I guess. You know, it is, and it really kind of gives a perspective kind of yeah. thing. Did like, you ever see Twilight? Or sorry, Twilight okay. Zone. Twilight Zone. Okay. Uh, well, are we talking the original or the original? I, 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 I mean, as far as reboots go, I can take or leave them, but it really yeah. have to depend on the reboot. I've seen them, but I wouldn't be able to break down in a, a, like an episode or anything. I just sort of know some of the classics, you know, the one with uh, William Shatner and Ray. I think that's when he's on the plane. Like that's I, the I, one I really only yeah, remember. <laughs> Well, that's one everyone remembers because it's one of the yeah. more famous. Well, that's um, what I'm saying. That, I yeah, don't know much after that. Beyond well, that. essentially, there's an episode where this woman is running away from these people because she's deemed ugly. When we see her, she's the most beautiful thing anybody has ever seen. But all the doctors are piggly looking and pretty much everybody else kind of looks like oh, a pig. I think I remember it, that one. It just really shows a perspective thing. Yeah. I, I actually do vaguely remember that one as well yeah um let's uh let, let's let's go back to your podcast right um sure what do you want to know for it well i was just curious as to uh let's start off what what initially inspired that what was it that sparked your brain i was like you know what i think i want to start a podcast and, and okay so here's what happened um i currently work at home depot to really pay the bills but before then, I was working at Wegmans, um, and I was really unhappy there for a long time because I felt like I had to do everybody else's work. One of the managers kept saying, teamwork makes the dream work. Teamwork makes the dream work. But people will call off at the drop of the hat, and not they will not face any repercussions for it. This one person, mm -hmm. are you familiar with Pokemon? Mm -hmm. They basically hired a human Psyduck. Keep falling out because they get headaches. <laughs> and this other guy, there could be like half of inch of snow on the roads. And he'll call up saying, hey, I can't come in. The snow's car The roads are covered in snow. It's like half an inch. Not even. <laughs> so fucking useless. <laughs> anyway, eventually I just got tired of all their shit and just got just really let them have it. Thus leading to my termination. And I figured, well, I got to figure out some way to pay the bills. And I've thought about starting a podcast because to quote Blitz um, from Hell of a Boss, if you're good at something, you should probably capitalize on it. I am good at talking geek. I've been talking geek for, well, pretty much ever since I could talk. That's what's up. Yeah. Speaking of geek, do you, do you approve of my attire for this episode? Can you recognize you recognize it? Yeah, the Vegeta thing. Yeah, that's my boy. Uh, it's a Vegeta. Uh, what, what do they call it? A unitard or something? The cell armor. Cell armor. That was it. Yeah, because it was in that saga. Um, all right. And then you figured, yeah, I'll do. So did the title Did the title of your show, Geek Talk, was that just like automatic? That it, like, was that yeah, The term to... Geek Talk is already taken. So I went up it and Geek uh, Talk I with see. Tyler. I was going to call it Geek Guy because I'm a sucker for letter alliteration. But yeah. I figured, eh, doesn't sound as catchy as it could be. If it was, if I, I mean, I kind of, I mean, my podcast goes different avenues. But if it was specifically sort of like like your show, I probably would have called it Geeking Out. Because I, I just, anytime I refer to. Understandable. Yeah. I mean, it might be, I already might be taken. I'm just. 
you know, that, that would no, been- it wouldn't surprise me if it was, but I understand what you're going for. Um, but the thing about my show, while I do focus on the aspects of geek culture, um, I have a Dragons episode coming up. I talk about aliens. And if you guys haven't catch it, catch my Gargoyles episode. Mm-hmm. Gargoyles, the black sheep of Disney. Um, I talked with a longtime fan there. She was a wonderful guest. And she was also on my Shakespearean show. So where I'm going with this is that I tried, while I focus on geek culture, so I try to diversify the aspects thereof so people can relate to it. I mm-hmm. talked about a foods in fiction, one of my very first episode, and uh, all the different foods I've seen and I've wanted to try, um, like Oishiriku from One Piece, which is essentially a red bean soup. Although I guess soup is kind of a loose definition for it. It's more like a porridge or a pudding thing. Mm. Um, I also talk about the more famous ones. Like when you na- when you name this particular food, this show comes to mind. I'm um, like Wensleydale cheese from the Wallace and Gromit series or spinach from Popeye. Oh man, Wallace and Gromit. I remember, uh, yeah, when he would uh, get up in the morning and, he has like that whole contraption set up, but every time he would have his do- uh, toast and was it toast and jam or butter or would it alternate? But anytime he would have marmalade because it takes oh, place okay. in England. Right. But anytime he would have that toast, I would always think, man, I want, I think I want some toast. now. <laughs> yeah. It's funny how I mean, it looks so um, good. <laughs> media portrays food to be more hype than they are. Um, one oh, of the, yeah. after, one of the foods I talk about is a steak up plop from Archer. Say what you want about the man, but he's got excellent taste in cuisine. I've <laughs> had it, and it's actually pretty good. For those of you unfamiliar with it, a steak au poivre is essentially a uh, porterhouse, usually steak, um, car- cooked in a brandy sauce and then prepared with a brandy cream with peppercorns on top. The sides usually are mixed vegetables and potatoes, but I prefer salad and potatoes. Kind of balances it all out. Damn. That sounds good, though. And, it really uh, is. Yeah. I got to be careful if we're, if we're going to talk about – actually, no. We cannot discuss any further about food because I haven't eaten yet. <laughs> That's just going to make me hungry. <laughs> All right. So I'll keep the food conversation to a minute. <laughs> it's not you. It's me. Um, they always say that. Yeah. Well, it's both of us. <laughs> You're making me hungry and I'm a glutton. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's uh so I'll you know, I've been curious about I mean many things really about your show, just just your your approach, because everyone has like a different way of doing operating. So I was curious as to how you chose um your your co-hosts, as you call them. I wasn't sure if it was the approach would be the co-host or what the topic of your episode is. So I was curious about what that approach is like. Okay. So for starters, um, I try to pick off topics that'll be good. And I have somewhat of a knowledge and expertise about, and then I try to find the right guest for it. Um, mm-hmm. My Shakespearean episode of my gargoyle um, guest, all this, they're both the same person. And she has a wonderful expertise on both and can talk your ear off about it. Um, Whereas some people inadvertently give me the idea, like the girl that was my female, my um, female authors episode. um, She started talking about how things like werewolves and mummies are really, really been domesticated to what they once were. Like pretty much Twilight is seen as a domestication for all modern vampires. They're cute. They're sparkly. Mm. They can survive the sun. Real vampires don't do that. They they look like human Annoyed bats. They test <laughs> garlic, holy water, and stake through the hearts. Whereas these ones are just more fun. Mm. And even depending on the series, they're more sexual than they need to be. Yeah. Speaking of vampires, though, did I don't did you happen to see? I don't know if it's real or not, but uh they so they announced um that they've casted Willem Dafoe to play Nosferatu and they had like they had it looked like a I don't know if it's just like an official photo or if it's supposed to be the movie poster or what but there was a shot of 
Willem Dafoe in sort of makeup, which like they really didn't have to add a lot of makeup. His bone structure right now is perfect for Nosferatu. But I and saw that. I, I do see him being a good Joker. I did see him as Green right. Goblin. And yeah, he's got all well, this. I think it's all, in my opinion, it's it has to, uh, definitely his like bone structure. I mean, on top, like you know, of course, his acting is phenomenal. But I think he has that, like the right bone he's structure one of those for those characters. People that definitely play villains better than they play the hero. Yeah. Um, Although when I see him, Price is another hero. example. Uh, Tim Curry is definitely an example of villains portrayed well. Mm. Um, yeah, I agree. But I when I see Willem Dafoe playing a good, like a good uh, supporting actor, like a more of a pro- protagonist, I do. I I am I, I am happy to see him play those roles as well. But when he plays a you know a antagonist or villain role, I'm like this guy fucking kills it. He's well, so yeah, good. that's because villains are more fun to play than yeah. the hero. Heroes have these rules that they need to live by. Villains fuck off the rules yeah, yeah. and just do whatever they want. Yeah, yeah. That's why more times than not, it's more fun to play the hero than it is to play the, uh, sorry, more fun to play the villain than it is to play the hero. Yeah. I w- I, I always think of going the, the anti-hero route. I don't know. If, so like somewhere be- in between, it's like, I'll follow yeah. the rules, but I will only follow them my way. Yeah, sort of, you know, kind of like, uh, I mean, yeah, you know, like a Deadpool or a Lobo or a... Uh, yeah. I really would have said more Batman. No, not Batman. No, nah. I mean, think about it. He's willing to break <laughs> the legs and kneecaps. Just yeah. go, I'm not going to kill you, but these hospital bills will. I don't know. Like, I would say fucking Punisher, man. I mean, he's... Even Punisher would be a good example. Yeah. Or Hellboy, for that matter. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So I guess um, the line between hero and villain is more of a spectrum than just a black and white thing. Yeah. Oof. That's deep. <laughs> Indeed. But even things that don't aren't really heroes, at least when we think of heroes, when we think superheroes, we always think of the spandex, red and blue Superman-esque superheroes. Right, of course. You got heroes superheroes. come in all shapes and sizes. And it really depends on which one you're looking at. We have Saitama, who kindly serves as a parody to what all heroes should be, where they're so strong. You can destroy them in a single punch. Yeah. Hence the running joke. We have gargoyles, which are more the black sheep heroes. They're dark. They had they have a what's called a conflicting resolution with humans mm. in the sense that we'll protect you, but we can't always fully trust them as proven with the Wyvern massacre back in 994 AD. Mm. And I would say even X-Men to an extent, they're <laughs> heroes, but they kind of have the love hate um, spectrum with humans. Oh, yeah. That's in fact, why I love X-Men. Funny thing, Demona was actually inspired by Magneto for the us versus them mentality. Mm. Oh, I love X Men. I was just having a rant with uh, actually, <laughs> actually the uh, the last re- the last episode one twelve. Uh, I me and me and my guest we just went on this rant about the the X the X Men movies in particular. But I was just like, yeah, I love the X Men. I don't often talk about X Men with uh, many people because. You know, everyone's mostly into the general, you know, MCU. Well, yes, and that's the bad thing about live action. A lot of the times it doesn't do the series well. A lot of the times they add stuff that that doesn't need to be added. A lot of times it kind of distracts from the main focus. Yeah, Like those new Godzilla movies, for example, a lot of the times I feel like it's too focused on the people. Same thing that can be said about the Transformers movies. A lot of the time, I just want to see two giant monsters beat the absolute shit out of each other just yeah. for the sake of them beating the absolute shit out of each other. If I want to see human conflict, I'd watch Sex in the City. <laughs> Even that. No, I don't know. <laughs> man, I, I got to be a special kind of high yeah. to enjoy yeah. Sex in the City. No, nah, man. Even high, man. I, I'm high all the time, and I wouldn't watch that. <laughs> like, I've tried watching My Little Pony. I'm not going to shame it. I, I couldn't even enjoy it while I was high. Yeah, look, like, yeah, well, you know, teach their own, right? That's what we say. Yeah, Everyone's and I don't their thing. Anything, but I feel like fandoms can get too defensive about their respective community. 
man, the, the thing I have about fandom is like, I mean, I get it. I understand why it has to be done, but all the, uh, just all like the, the, the nerd culture, geek culture, like publications, they really right, I'm gonna stop you right there. Nerd and geek culture are two different things. I, like I correlate say, it too. may the force be with you. Whereas a nerd will tell you the scientific equation. Yeah, but then you got the you wait, all right, wait, say that again. The nerds are the what on the more factional things like rocks and animals and flowers, whereas geeks focus on the more fictitious side, like your Star Wars, your Lord of the Rings, your Marvel comics, things like that. Yeah, but then you got your geeks that go pretty deep, and then it's like real close to the nerd part of it where they really start Which dissecting the, everything. <laughs> well, yeah. So you can be like a nerd about spectrum. something. Um, is it possibly both? Absolutely. Yeah. The girl I had for my episode, shout out to Danielle Orsino, by the way, um, wrote a book about dragons, but they're not dragons like we know them, like your Smaugs or your Shendus from Jackie Chan Adventures. Mm-hmm. Or even your Kaidos from One Piece, there are dragons that w- could probably um, be in existence today due to how scientifically accurate they are. <sighs> and if I was going to relate them to any animal that's ever exists, I would say a Dronodon or a Komodo dragon would be the yeah. best. Too. Yeah, yeah, of course. Well, Komodo dragon for sure. And then things are massive enough. So just imagine, just imagine even the upscale of that. But. Well, I do, in fact, actually have an episode coming up called Fact and Fiction, where I portray, um, I I separated that into three groups. The what the fact, like a lot of the things that wouldn't make sense, somehow make sense in their world. The you can see that happening, or it's like you're not sure if this would be 100% true, but it wouldn't surprise you if it was true. And then the factual side, where shows and movies and books and whatnot take a more scientific approach to it. Mm. Yeah. Um, actually, I wanted to ask you, um, how do you, how do you dictate the, the runtime of each episode? Cause you do have ones, they, they vary. Uh, they do. On and, and I hate to say this ever since we have media devices, feels like the average attention span is a lot shorter than what it normally or at least what it should be, or at the very least what it used to be. So I got mm-hmm. to figuring those people that don't want to listen to a full hour long talk, me, me speaking about things like gargoyles and One Piece or Beast Wars for that matter, mm-hmm. they can still enjoy it within a shorter time frame. So let me let me put this out there. Because I do agree. I agree that everyone's attention span uh is different. And sure, I'm sure they're they're getting shorter because of how everything is so immediate. But I mean, my only th- my arg- my only argument against that uh, is that um you know sure you could like because like you know I have ep- I have episodes that are easily run to like two three hours right and um but I know like I just know that not any like not everyone or anyone would sit sit down and listen to that whole thing from start to finish. Of course, they're going to pause it and go about the rest of the day or job, whatever or it is. Or maybe they that just like doing. the sound of my captivating voice and they just do anyway. But the, my point your- is, my, my point is, is that like knowing that I'm still going to put out to like 90 minute, two hour, three hour t- uh, content regardless, because like, what you know, it is what it is. Cause, because I guess, you know, I guess like depending on how you operate, like how you run your your podcast, your show, is that um I always you know I'm always thinking about the conversations, the the interaction. So I have I've had episodes where I've cut it into two parts, but you know I I never like I never went in and was like all right I'm gonna do a twenty minute thirty minute episode and that's it. And okay. you know knowing me, I'm very long winded, so that's like one of the primary reasons but that's what a podcaster needs actually they need to be long-winded they need to carry the conversation (laughs) out to some extent well Um, with me i I use very mundane language so i can see i can see myself you know it depends you know it all depends who the audience is like i my my friends will tell me when they're listening so when i hear when i hear that i'm like oh okay so like all right okay so to answer your question 
I really don't. I, you, when I was starting out the podcast, I try to keep. Let's see if we can do at least forty minutes. But then I realized a podcast is essentially a recorded conversation. Right. So I, at this point, I just let it flow naturally. I try not to set rules for it, yeah. depending on the show. Like on um, the Dragon episode I recorded, I asked my guest, shout out to Danielle Arsino again, um, would it be possible to come up with some of your favorite dragons? And she came out with a lot of dragons I wasn't entirely expecting. But a lot of her list comes from Western dragons, or at least any dragon that would fit the guidelines for a Western dragon criteria and had one Eastern dragon. I took the opposite route and pretty much mentioned all Eastern dragons with one Western dragon in there. Mm. Yeah. Well, like, I guess I bring it up because I I've seen, I've seen and, and listened to some of the episodes you've had and like even, even some of the shorter ones that were like a half hour so was it, is that all now is that edited or is that like just a natural recording of some of them are natural. Or, some of them I needed to edit. Okay. Because a lot of things I've, that were recorded, I didn't feel would flow well with the episode. Gotcha. If some people heard them. So I just uh, got rid of that. Mm. Yeah. I, um, yeah. I mean, look, right. I'm not even like, I'm not even like trying to debate on like, like you should do this. Like I'm not trying to push any of that on you. I don't want you no, to get that. That's that called being a it. fascist. <laughs> it, I mean, I'm always open to suggestions. Oh yeah. My, my questions are out of curiosity, to be honest. Like oh, I'm that's very fine. And thank you for being yeah. curious about that. No, yeah, of course. Cause uh, you know, again, like uh even we were when we were talking um, you know, before doing this recording uh you know you would ask me oh uh, what's a, what's this episode going to be about and i'm like well i don't want to you know i'm not going to ruin it <laughs> you know i want everything to be as as natural and authentic uh you know and, and uh i don't know if i told you this but i feel like i've talked about it with someone or maybe even by myself on on an episode but um generally when i have people on for the first time it's just the, any other starter conversation with a potential friend, essentially. You know, you're going to ask all these basic questions, especially regarding uh, what it is that we know that you do. You know what I mean? So, um, I mean, if I have like a, a, a special like segment of a show and, you know, if we get into it, we'll get into it. If not, it's it's no worry. But um yeah, like it's just uh, all just general questions that I, I like to ask. It's just uh, how I get to know people. Um, and I think that's what helps make the podcast even more authentic and relatable, in my opinion. Um, it's funny you mention that because I feel like a lot of things are being changed just to make them more relatable. I mean, I'm not going to lie. There are times where I wish a character could just be a character without putting labels on it. Like, mm-hmm. This character needs to be black. This character needs to be gay. This character needs to be a woman. Mm-hmm. Well, like that's the good thing about anime. A lot of the times when anime is there, people don't put labels on it. They just accept it for the character. Mm. And for the record, I'm not dismissing the idea of making these characters more diverse. In fact, I like the idea of having diverse characters, but I feel like a lot of the times when the character is there, it's there to check a box instead of actually just being a person. Mm. You ever notice that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's everywhere. I would, I would say, actually, there was one that it didn't throw me off, but it was just it was just one of those, oh, okay, kind of moments. But it wasn't uh, like it wasn't like something outrageous happened, really. And uh, who I'm, the, the character I'm talking about is Korra from Legend of Korra. Okay. Yeah, have you seen that? So what? Yeah, I've seen it. It's okay, kind so of I'm the, talking, well, the I mean, original series, but it's not so, bad. So what's your problem with Korra? Oh, I have no problem with it. I'm just stating that, and I guess spoiler alert for anyone listening. That, movie, that show's been around for almost what ten years. Yeah, but I have friends. I have friends that don't watch. If they haven't it. seen it, then that's on them. <laughs> and it's not like you're giving the latest spoiler of Morbius or something. <laughs> Well, spoiler alert, uh, yeah, at the end of the series, um, I mean, they kind of imply it 
apply it that uh oh I forget the name Cora and the other female character Asami yeah no that it just felt like they uh, shipped her together so my yeah. my buddy um said that since he's part of the LGBTQ spectrum okay. he noticed it so maybe they put it away that people that don't fit that criteria would notice it but they would right which like uh, I don't know I thought that was I thought that was great no it is and I applaud diversity yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing about my show. I don't care if you're black. I don't care if you're white. I don't care if you're Asian, Hispanic. I don't care if you're gay, straight, bi. I don't care if you're a man, woman, or that technicolor in between. As long as you know your shit and can hold the conversation well, you will always have a spot on my show. Absolutely. I support that. I'm with it. I love it. I will say this, at least for me. If you identify as a stapler or something, then I'd be like, hold on a second. What? what? <laughs> well, that does give a lo- good um, idea for what could happen for trans. I'm not dismissing the trans thing. I'm just, oh, no, I I'm just understand even. it. It's like I understanding as a man, a man identifying as a woman. I get that. Yeah, I know. I understand as a woman identifying as a man. But it feels like gender is now a spectrum. It still yeah. makes sense to me, but I'm not going to knock it. But who's to say what else won't will become a spectrum? Yeah. Who's to say ethnic identity won't become a spectrum? Well, who's to say the, what you identify as a species won't become as a spectrum? Yeah, I, my, 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 I don't know. <laughs> like my, I have a, very, so many thoughts about that. I don't know if I can get into that. <laughs> so many things it's it's a crazy world it's a crazy world that's all i'm gonna it say is. and i'm not knocking anybody who fits in this category yeah it's just something i probably won't understand but exactly. i'll respect your decision yeah exactly now i may have questions because i'm genuinely curious but uh yeah i'm it, it is like i just i say it, it is what it is i mean the way i see it i'm kind of like america during world war ii <laughs> I don't give a shit until I become directly involved. Yeah. And it's like pretty much how this whole, um, how they pretty much got in there. Japan's like, hey, guys, we did it. We just blew up a bunch of islands. They're like, great. Wait, which ones? Uh, someplace called Hawaii. It's like, you oh. didn't. No. Dude, that's America. You don't want to fuck with America. <laughs> America. Fuck yeah. Uh, it's a great song. It, it, Another it, great it, song uh, is Ray Park and Matt Stone's yeah. underrated movie. It, it was uh, just funny for being funny. There's, I personally believe that all creative venues shouldn't be censored for the sake of being censored. Like, obviously, if you're targeting towards kids, that makes sense. Like, are you are you a Beast Wars fan? Yeah, yeah, we've talked about Beast Wars before. Okay, so there's this character Quick Strike who yeah. basically looked like a cobra. Scorpion hybrid, where mm. the tail serves as like a snake, kind of like a chimera thing. Yeah. And he's trying to sound like this rugged, badass, tough guy. <laughs> but he can't say kick ass because it's a children's show. Yeah. So he could say kick keister and <laughs> stuff like that. It's like, I, I get it. That's like trying to impress a people at a bar by drinking <laughs> apple juice. Oh, man. I'm a tough guy. Here, I'm going to drink my apple juice. <laughs> Yeah, wait. How so I we... get that, but if you're if it's targeted towards adults, and they have me offended by it, I, I I mean I'm not saying we should go out our way to make fun of people, because no, then you're just being an asshole. If you're making a joke about something, just try not to take it too personally. Well, yeah, that well, you know, that's that's everybody's accountability. Is uh, you know, it depends on how how much they're attached or identifying with the thing you know what i mean it, I, I do and you're not wrong on that yeah i mean one of the best characters in dinobot and um, beast wars far none is dinobot he is very relatable he's got an internal conflict that he was struggling with he actually left the predacons joined the maximals for a while joined the predacons and him when he was given the chance to kill rat trap he couldn't do it mm. So yeah. uh, same thing, he's one of the more relatable characters. 
even if he doesn't look like us, see, we can still relate to somebody. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Um, um, because you got me thinking about relating too, and I guess at some point I stop relating to characters. Maybe that's why I'm I'm not in as I'm not as invested in. Well, relating thing. now, are you are you talking about like surface level stuff where the person you're identifying with is just a guy or of Asian descent? Or are you going for more realistic, hard to home stuff? Like you can uh, relate to Batman in the Justice League because he's the one person that doesn't have any powers. No, uh, I don't, no, not even that. I just think uh, uh, I just I relate to. I, I mean, people who have been listening or watching may may know this now that I'm very um, I'm a big fan of stand up comedy. So I'll, there's a lot of stand up comics that I I relate to, you know, um, with their you know and their their jokes and their material. So if anything, if I'm relating to anybody, it's it's the the comics as of late. There you go. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, I kind of that because I've always wondered, like, man, like I'm not as much of a, you know, a geek as I used to be. I mean, I still have my collection of action figures. You can see them in some of them in the background. And, you know, I have some of like my comics from over the years, but I don't I just don't deeply invest in, uh, you know, as much as, uh, you know, a lot of people that I know. That's OK. Everyone has a hobby. Just yeah. because some people are more into something doesn't mean you should be. Yeah. Um, my sister, don't know why, she hates Lord of the Rings. I get <laughs> not liking it, but how do you full-blown hate it? It's the best yeah. movie trilogy ever made. That's just not my opinion. That's the 17 awards they won from the Oscars back then, back when winning something at the Oscars actually means something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's, I mean... I don't know if I've told you be in, uh, before in uh, the first time we talked, um, you know, there's a lot of the current, you know, all the popular animes and whatever shows, but even like just regular television, whatever. Like I don't follow all like what everybody else follows. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a very late bloomer and I might not even get into it at all. You know, like I'm that. As a podcaster, I can tell you, Best thing to do is go by the beat of your own drum. <laughs> oh, yeah. My right. one friend loves cauliflower pizza. I don't know why. <laughs> and I'll joke with him it's about it. It's actually good. I don't, I don't shame him for it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I like cauliflower pizza. It's, it's good. Or those people that say, oh, you're not going to. Okay. So a while back when I was thinking about doing a podcast, I ran into this guy. And are you familiar with the phrase goat? course yeah we talk, yeah we've talked about goat the, the okay, greatest area. of all time yeah he said that for everything boneless wings are goat food your goat goatings it's like oh dude what it's like goatings goatings yeah i should you not goatings all right that should not exist <laughs> it shouldn't and a lot of things shouldn't exist but, I know, but that, that, one, that, that, that one in, in particular should not be a thing you need no, to stop that. But a lot of the things <laughs> that shouldn't be things are things. I know. That's sad, but that's just the way the world works. Yeah, but goading can be stopped. <laughs> it really should be. <laughs> we can just not condone it. If that person is going to continue. Honestly, the more you that. use something or the more something's being used, it kind of demerits all value. Like there's an episode, I believe it was in Ben 10 Alien or Ultimate Alien or whatever, where he's fighting Vilgax. And he turns into Jet Ray, one of his aliens that can fly. Then Vilgar starts chasing him, fly. He's like, flying is not fun when everybody can do it. <laughs> oh man, I mean, if we're, I mean, I've, I've always, I mean, any any geek had that conversation about like what kind of powers or power would you want? And I always. It's just well, so that funny. Are we talking about combative use? Or are we talking right. well, about I was getting uh, everyday that. use? Right. I was getting to that. I was like, you really have to think about it because it's, it's not an easy one to answer. So I always have a hard time, uh, you know, answering that one. 
But well, I always well, generally then, say, uh, well, no, it wouldn't work, but I would prefer maybe flight. But I have a fear of heights. So that's like one of those things. That'd be a monkey paw situation. <laughs> like you wish to fly, but you're greatly acrophobic, or I wish to breathe underwater. Done. But you lose your ability to swim. So you're yeah. not going to drown to death. You'll just starve to death. <laughs> what? <laughs> There, there's this whole thing, wonky paw, where you get the wish. Wait, why starve? <laughs> if you, why would you, you starve to death? underwater, but if you go in the ocean and you can't swim, you're just going to go to the bottom and you're going to starve to death. If not, you're going to die from the cold of the tears. <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe I miss. Yeah, I guess I because I thought you were implying like, all right, you you could have the ability. To go underwater, like you can breathe underwater. I thought you were implying that. No. Okay, never mind. But being able to fly, that would be cool if you can. It would, you- and it would be one of those powers they pretty much just to give everybody. It's yeah. like, what can you do? I can fly. Oh, what? Well, yeah, so can I. But what else can you do? Yeah, fuck I can it. fly. But what else can you do? But what can you do while you're flying is the question. Right, like Green Lantern. He can shoot those green energy beams. Oh, I'm not even saying that, man. I'm talking like aerial combat, doing like martial arts in the sky while you're flying, doing like a crazy flying. Kind of like that first Pokemon movie where they had the two Charizards fighting each other. Man, I'm talking more like um, Liu Kang's bicycle kick in the skies. <laughs> well, there you, know, you go. Dragon Ball Z, but with actual martial arts in the, you know, in. in well, the, the original that. series that was full of martial arts. Who? In fact, the, ori- the original series was full of martial arts. Yeah, uh, but I mean. In the, um, in the whole first um, series is basically the anime version of Journey to the West. Yeah, but I'm Goku saying more. more um, being, having ties to uh, mm-hmm. Sun Wukong. But I'm saying more of a, how it's displayed, like. There is fighting in Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball. But I'm saying, you know, I, I just feel like Avatar, The Last Airbender, and Legend of Korra, what they were able to do in, you know, with the, the, with the bending abilities, showing the martial arts, the actual, like, just showing real technique and in, in something like that, but applied to, uh, yeah, the, the DB, DBZ world. You know, it would be... Well- that's the funny thing about all the bendings. They're all based on different forms of Chinese martial art. Yeah. And so is Dragon Ball, right? They, 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 they're they fighters. And it started that way. It originally started that way. Yeah. At this point, Dragon Ball exists to say, I'm stronger than you. Oh, no, wait, I'm stronger than you. I'm stronger beyond that. At this point, it's a pissing yeah. contest. Yeah. You're the strongest person. Sorry. Well, strongest it's a, individual it, is. It's seeing whose dick is bigger. Pretty much, yeah. Or vagina. We don't want to leave out the, <laughs> the female character. Oh, okay. Well, I have the thickest vagina. <laughs> yes. Well, well, basically, it's a pissing contest of who's strongest. That, that's all it really feels like it comes down to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. So, all right. Um, so, aside aside from podcasting, hosting your own podcast. What are other uh, what other podcasts do you listen to? Um, I try to keep I try to keep my viewing diverse as possible, so I feel like I can get um, into more contact. Um, my one buddy does a sports podcast, and I listen to that. And actually, in uh, in December, I have an upcoming episode called "The World of Fictional Sports," where I talk about sports that we've seen in fiction, like say Quidditch, and how it applies to today's world. And how the inspiration it got from modern uh, sports like basketball and soccer and oh, football. Okay, that's cool. Um, uh, but when I'm not podcasting, I'm actually get, getting back into writing children's books. I published my first book a few years ago. It's called Peter on the Cold Christmas. I'm working on my next book. Um, I don't want to give too much away, but it involves a hyena and the act of empathy. Interesting. I, I did see your post on that, and I was I was actually gonna get into that eventually, but I'm glad you brought it up. Um, so what 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 inspired you to write that book? 
Uh, the first one or the second one? Uh, the first one. The, the, the Peter and the Cool Christmas book. That Honestly, know. it started out as a what if concept. Like, okay. you know, that thing, be good or else you're going to get coal for Christmas. Okay. Yeah. It started off as a what if concept. Like, what if somebody was trying to be bad in order to get coal? That's how it initially started out. But as I wrote the book, I find myself that I identified a lot with Peter because growing up, I wasn't the most socially graceful child. Mm. And I did things and because I thought I just wanted to fit in. And when I got older, I'm realizing just because you have someone's attention doesn't mean you have their respect. Oh, right. Of course. So I find myself relating to Peter a lot, even though this book takes place in Russia. And I picked Russia because it was a cold place to live. Mm-hmm. That's like the only reason why I picked it. Um, but anyway, no, it, he just he grows up in a poor house, like the book says, and he lives with his mom, his dad, and a yak, because I was going for a rhyming thing. Um, and he, he he's bad all year round, just so he can get a call from Santa to keep his family warm during winter. Oh. It's one of those don't judge somebody until you get to know them kind of books. Absolutely. And even then, I don't think you can really judge them because that's the way they are going through something. Who can say what you would have done under the, the same circumstances? Absolutely. I mean, that speaks volumes because it's that's something you can virtually, you know, relate to like anything right now in life. To be there honest. you go. You know, it's, you know, there are people that put everything up front and then there are some that kind of uh, embellish. And well, that's the difference between a simple character versus one who's more layered out. Um, let, let's look. Uh, I'm, I'm just saying people. To, I'm just talking beyond characters. I'm just talking about people. I know. That's why I'm getting at. Um, okay. Someone like David Xanatos, he's a layered guy. Yeah. He's very smart. He, without him, the series wouldn't have unfold. And we even have the um, t- television trope now, the Xanatos Gambit, yeah. where no matter what the outcome is, the person who makes the bet will win. And I actually asked Wiseman about this. He told me that he was getting tired of all those Disney, of all those villains losing like Duke Igthorn from Gummy Bears, Shredder from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, Megatron from Transformers, and so on and so forth. Mm. So he intentionally created a villain, and he is a villain, but he's not a villain, and here's why. The old school villains will just do villain for villainy for the sake of doing villainy, whereas this one is just trying to meet his own goals and ambition that happen to conflict with the Manhattan clan more Mm. times than not. And even when he appears that he lost, he will always find a way to win. Like, I would say the most modern example I can think of off the top of my head is I put my name on a dating profile, send the link to my website and all that jazz. And even if I don't walk out of that website with a girlfriend, I can still find victory in the fact that I'm still getting my name out there as a podcaster. Maybe they'll check it out. Maybe they'll recommend me to their friends. Who can say? Mm Mm-hmm. Now, I mean, that kind of actually brings me to this point because we've we've briefly talked about it in the past, like the the last time. Um, um, putting out more content on your uh, on your pages now. How's how's that been? Good. I, you have, um, it sounds like you have. You know, the reason why I ask generally is because like you have a lot of it. Well, it it, it seems from my from my view that you have a lot of. Like you're logging a lot of episodes with with all these guests. Um, now, is there is there reason why you have so many advanced recordings already? Or there is, and I'm going to get into that. Okay. Um, last year, I tried to do it then and there that week of, and a lot of times I had to re-record because I didn't wasn't happy how it turned out. But at this point, at that point, weeks passed by for the next episode to come out. So I figured, why not record early and then schedule it there? And some people would prefer to record the week of. I'm like, you know what? That's fine. Just commit to this date or else I'm going to have to push your episode back. Mm. I, mean, I get it. We're all busy. We all have shit to do. That holds water. 
but I, I can't I can't be that person that just waits for people anymore. It's like if right. you have your own things to go on, I understand that, but I can't wait for you. I'm I need to follow train rules. Mm. Yeah. Um I mean, unfortunately, yeah, that's sometimes that happens. I've I've been there. Sometimes I'm I mean, I don't want to say, but I, I'm I'm there currently with certain other people. But it it's you know, when it's out of your control, it's out of your control. I just, exactly. Uh, so that's why I try to record them in advance so yeah. I can get that in control. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I've been trying to be a little more strategic about my scheduling with podcasts because <clears throat> I guess I start feeling overwhelmed when I realize how much needs to be done with you know everything else it's besides one of those the podcast. That people don't always take into account. Like a lot of my friends say they want to have a party. Like, okay, great. And then a lot of the times they they do the more decorative stuff without actually the whole substance thing. You know, it's like it's like a Michael Bay movie, what they're trying to do. They want to grab your attention and they get all the superficial stuff, but there's no real depth to it. The mm-hmm. snacks are scarce, if any. Like not a lot of time is that is put into that. The ha- the place looks nice, but the party's kind of dead. No music know anything <laughs> like what are you trying to go for exactly gotcha no I, I, sorry go ahead no no i was saying i was just agreeing with you uh, you know I, I i see what you're saying um but yeah you just uh unfortunately you just move on right you just move on to the next i i, I it's just you know it's a personal thing for me uh thing uh for me Oy, I, I i glitched right there <laughs> no um i don't i i sort of not panic but then i i get overwhelmed when i have four episodes uh backed up that i have to edit through and and put out when i have multiple when i have like a handful of episodes record pre-recorded I start, you know, I start getting overwhelmed because, you know, even because it's easy to lose track half the time. You're, you're right. It's not even that. No, it's not even losing track. It's just I, you know, knowing me, once I'm in sort of that, uh, in that zone of editing, because I do love, I do like to edit material uh, content. I love making videos, so that's why I went to full on video podcasts. But I do like editing, so I know a lot of my time is put on the podcast for you know for the editing um, aspect, and my my artwork is put on on hold. Um, so that's when I start like I start getting a little uh, you know frantic because I'm like ah I, I want to work on art too, but so much I'm always like focused on the the podcast. That so that only happens when I have. A handful of episodes uh, pre-recorded, so I try to schedule. Is what I'm getting at. I just try to schedule a little more strategic, so that every week I'll always have at least one. If it's two episodes, it's fine. But at least every week I'll always have one episode I need to um, review, edit, you know, post production, all that stuff, and then publish or schedule for publish. Yeah, <laughs> it's a balancing act. I'm not gonna lie. I put off the hyena book for so long. I'm still doing it, yeah. but um, my podcast, my uh, what's called my main priority. Well, if I, if we're not including work, because my job pays the bills. The podcast is fun, but for as of this recording, it's not making me any money. I mean, oh, I do yeah. get sponsors mm-hmm. occasionally for my show, um, but if I were relying on that for it to be my main source of income, I'd be homeless by now. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm the same way. I just started a day job um, to invest in on the business because I'm also trying to do some more markets and festivals here. So. There you go. Yeah. Anything you can do to get your name out there. Yeah. The old expression, there's no such thing as bad publicity. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, going back to your books. Where, like, where can, when can, where, bleh, where can people purchase uh, Peter and the Cole Christmas book? If all you are listening and are interested in Peter and the Cole Christmas book, please go to geektalkwithtyler.com 
you can go on my contact page and you let me know how many bucks I can put you down for. Nice. Um, and also, uh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm going through my notes. I want to make sure I cover everything I wanted to discuss. Um, so outside of podcasting, outside of <clears throat> comic books, cartoons, outside of all that, what, is, what else do you do? Like, what are your other interests and hobbies outside of those? I, um, well, I don't exactly make a king's ransom, but when I get the money for it, I do like joining these conventions, your Comic-Cons, your Anime NYCs. Um, mm-hmm. I also enjoy paintball. That's always fun to yes. do. Assuming you can get the people for it. Yeah. Uh, karaoke is always enjoyable. Um, trying to think off the top of my head. Um, I guess I go I'll go back to writing. I'm kind of working on a manga series right now that takes place in a dystopian future. Hmm. I like that. I'm all about that dystopian future. There you go. <laughs> uh, that's what's up. Yeah. So how do you now? How do you um, balance the time for for all these projects? And it's even you know, hard. I'm, not I'm not gonna lie. Here. In fact, somebody submitted a some characters for my upcoming Squid Game episode that I wasn't familiar with, so I have to research about those and mm-hmm. watch a series. Got some game of got a Game of Thrones characters on there. I have um, all these video game based characters that I just got to do more research on before I can actually decide how far they'll make it. Mm. So I got to put some time in for that. It's a balancing act. To quote David Zanatos, if you pay a man <laughs> enough, he will walk barefoot into hell. That essentially means that if the price is worth it, they'll do anything to get it. <laughs> you like quoting a lot of characters, especially referring to uh, Xanatos. He is badass, though. He is badass, yeah. and he's what the 90s villain should be. He's a suave motherfucker. That's, well, I mean, you know what he's like? Yeah, he's kind of like a Tony Stark, but in his own way, you know. He's. Uh, I feel like Tony Stark is more of a playboy. Yeah, he's more of a playboy, but more of a businessman. There's still, a, there's still a smooth, there's still like a swagger to them both. So. Yeah, but I have more respect for Xanatos than I do for Iron Man. Yeah, I feel like he's what we would be if we were uh, given the the um, ability to have all that money and all that stuff. Whereas Xanatos is the person we should be i'm yeah. not saying villainous and underhanded in any way but the more affirmative you know who you are kind of person <laughs> okay well towards the end of my podcast i always try to throw in my uh recently new segment unnecessary deep dive <laughs> I don't know if you remember. I may have mentioned it to you in the DMs. It's I nice. don't recall, but that's okay. <laughs> all right, it's all good. So, yeah, uh, usually I do. Well, I have been doing this mostly uh, on my solo episodes. But, uh, you know, if, I, if there's something that's been in my dome, you know, for a while, um, I try to share it with uh, my guest so i figured you know we always were we were into like the geek talk and i figured i would extend it with uh an an unnecessary deep dive um so i because i i I often overthink stuff so that's okay and like not even overthinking but even just kind of i don't know it's sort of like an, an appreciative but also critical rant that i go on about stuff i'm into and then okay so what do you have in mind so one i've been thinking uh as of late and i've been talking to uh, talking to another friend about it um is uh the the logan film uh versus the old man logan comics okay question well for me it's not so much as a question but more of a uh, an acceptance of like, you know what? Like, I like Logan the way it is as a standalone film. It's okay that it's different from the comics. I actually kind of prefer it that way because I've read the comics. Have you read the comics or seen the film? I've seen the film. I vaguely recall the comics. And here's what I'm going to say about that. 
a lot of the times people expect everything to go in to a live action film counterpart. Uh, many people don't know this, but there was actually a chapter they skipped in Lord of the Rings, the bomb Tom Bombadil um, portion. They completely skipped that. It did not make it its way into the movie, but the movie still won 17 Oscars, 11 being less film alone. So if you're expecting everything to go in a movie or I think to be 100% accurate, you're going to be in for a bad time because oh, absolutely. movies are... It's like trying to fit 50 slices of cheese within a single sandwich. Right. And I, I, I agree a hundred percent. Like I never really try to have any really high expectations when a uh, film adaptation is about to be done from a comic or a cartoon. Uh, I always consider myself a forgiving fan and I really try not to have any. I would say that, that would have to be depending on the content. Like yeah. how far they change it up to the point where you need to start questioning it. Which well, is why right. I refer to Dragon Ball Evolution as one of the four horsemen of apocalypse for a terrible live action movie counterparts. We have yeah. that one. We have the Avatar one. You know which one I'm talking about. Of course. Right. And then we have the Super Mario Brothers movie. Right. Like if I had to pick a fourth one. But my, my point is, is maybe Space Jam, the second one. But my point is now is like, why why bitch about it <laughs> if it's terrible like it's terrible and then you don't people watch to it. get out their frustration yeah. uh, that's why people bitch but yeah. i'm not saying people shouldn't bitch when they need to or absolutely have to yeah but i feel like people need to pick and choose what hills they want to die on yeah well basically my my rant would be going back to so i want to go back to logan because that that's the main focus is that you know because there are fans that are like that will, you know, they they nitpick. So those, you know, because it's not like the comic books, like it wouldn't be possible because of the whole Fox Studios, Marvel Studios thing. But or as Sony, as, Fox Sony. And, as soon as Sony and Disney are done with their pissing contest, yeah. I'm sure they'll find a way. Yeah. The, but, uh, yeah. So. You you never you never read or you're not as familiar with the the old. I'm not Logan as familiar comics. with the Logan comics. All no. right. So for anyone that's listening or watching, I have some some notes from from memory because I I love the comics is so good. Now obviously this is a Marvel comics. It's all related. It's everyone is connected. So there's gonna be a lot of spoilers in this discussion. <laughs> And, well, are you uh, referring to the multiverse where everything's connected? No, I'm just saying that in Old Man Logan, it's it's a it's a whole Marvel universe. There are characters involved that aren't just strictly X Men universe characters. It's involving everybody. Um, so my so basically here, let me just go off my notes here, so I don't rant and go off tangents. But so I already pointed out that. Logan as a film, I, I personally I love it. Like it, it's 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 dark, it's gritty, it's violent. It really hit. I mean, for me, it hit some you know heartstrings, and um, you know that's what a Wolverine movie, a Logan movie is. It's it's a dark life for Logan. So I love how well uh, James Mangold depicted that in this in this uh, film. Um, but. So the whole thing with old man Logan, right, is that you find out uh, this is like jumping into the future. Parts of the U.S. are owned by supervillains. So, for example, and I don't remember it exactly, but for example, like California, like that chunk would be um, owned by like Dr. Doom or something like I think Magneto had another section of the U S the Hulks, uh, which is like an inbred Hulkling family owned like a big chunk of the U S which Logan resides in. He has a family. They're all farmers. They're just living a peaceful life at this point. You know, he's got grandchildren, all that, right. He lived a full, well, in our eyes, a full life, even though he's lived forever. Um, so he's living on the Hulk's land. So they, they got to pay them for the, you know, for their, the land and all that, like, you know, like rent. And um, 
But you find out, right? So this is 50 years jumping into the future. You find out over those 50 years, Logan never took out his claws. Like that was a major plot point in the Old Man Logan series. And the reason why, uh, which I feel like they kind of try to hint at in the Logan movie, and I'll, I'll point it out in a sec, but the reason why in the comics he never pulled out his claws was because he killed the entire X-Men. Oh, and yeah, so that's a major spoiler for anyone that is like a comic book fan, an, uh, an Wolverine fan, but never read that series. So that's a major spoiler. He kills all of the X-Men because, um, was it Doc, Dr. Mysterio? Am I, is that, or is it just Mysterio? <laughs> just Mysterio. Huh? It's Mysterio. You like yeah, the Mysterio. You know yeah, yeah. So Mysterio tricks, somehow uh, is able to trip uh, Wolverine's senses and he he gets them with like a crazy illusion of all, all of the Marvel villains you can think of crashing in at the X-Mansion. Um, you know, they, they, they just like take over Wolverine basically goes in berserker mode. Cause he's like, you know, he's seeing like his teammates, the students getting killed. He's fighting off all these villains. He's slicing them up, just going full berserker mode. And then he, and it's crazy. Cause like when you're reading the, you know, the captions, the, the bubbles, you know, it gets to a point where like, you're seeing the villains attacking him or he's killing these villains, but they're saying like, stop. Or like, you know, they're like, did they do something for similar for the injustice movie? I never seen the injustice movie. Yeah. Joker um, was kind of getting tired of playing with Batman, So he quote unquote, one do play on easy mode. Okay. And he tricks Superman into killing um, his fan is Lois, his unborn child, mm. pretty much metropolis. Uh, I mean, it's, that's very similar for sure. So go, so Wolverine slicing up everybody and then the illusion, uh, wears off and he finds out that he, he had a Jubilee, I believe in his hands, all just like gutted out and she dies in his arms and you, and it reveals everybody in the mansion all sliced up. It was crazy. And then he actually explored that in the movie, did they? No, so my theory is, um, I think they try to imply it with because in the movie he's with uh, Professor X. I think they try to imply that Professor X may have killed the X Men with his, um, you know, when he we had those like episodic, like telepathy thing uh, thing when Mind everyone burst. Was, yeah, yeah. So I think. You know, that, that was like their way of alluding like, oh, that's how like everybody died. You know, every, you know, the mutants went extinct or not extinct, but, you know, all the X, all the X-Men are gone. functionally extinct. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's how they were trying to hint at it. And, you know, in that movie, he also had uh, X-23 with him, right? In the comics. <clears throat> so that's the whole thing, right? In the comics. So this is 50 years later. He has to pay off the Hulklings and he, he does this uh, crazy, like, um, like cross country, I don't know, a delivery or pickup for some crazy package along with uh, Hawkeye. So he, he's like, he's aside with Hawkeye who is then uh, blind, which is funny. Um, Hawkeye? Yeah. Hawkeye. Was it really Hawkeye in the movie? Yeah. No, not in the movie. I'm talking about in the comics. Sorry. Oh, in, the, okay. in the old man, old man Logan comics. So I'm saying in the movie, instead of Professor X and, and X-23, in the comics, it was uh, Logan and Hawkeye traveling cross country for to, to do a job. And he they go through all these crazy, you know, adventures. You know, you, you come across Black Bolt. You come across uh, Peter Parker's, like, granddaughter, who's, like, who takes the mantle of spider girl, but is like fucked up. It's like, it's crazy. You see like all these different generations of, of like that, that hero. Um, and, um, you know, he fights like, even like, uh, who was it? At one point Logan fights the red skull, which is pretty crazy. But anyway, 
cut this short. Spoiler alert. Also, Logan makes it back home. Unfortunately, I don't think Hawkeye is with him, but he makes it home finally, but only to come home to his family murdered by the Hulks. So finally he snaps, the claws come out, snicked, and uh, he visits the, the Hulklings um, and basically settles the score with Bruce Banner which was really fucking awesome. You know, he kills all. And then that's the thing too, like the Hulks, they were like, they were kind of like hillbillies all like, you know, deformed and, you know, just real like redneck hillbilly kind of character. Um, but just in Hulk form. <laughs> but uh, so, you know, he slices him up. Then he finally fights Banner and, um, you know, and then cut to the end. As he's leaving, he discovers a, a baby Hulk and he decides to take him and, you know, take it, you know, take care of him, take him under his wing or under his claws, I should say. And uh, I mean, so I kind of like I know I know I butchered the whole description, but it really is a good uh, miniseries. Uh, like, you know, when I say it involves the the you know the other marvel characters like you see that throughout their journeys because like i said they come across black bolt who is the leader of the um inhumans and uh yeah uh who oh man there's a bunch there's i just i'm like drawing a blank right now but anyway i recommend it if you if you like comic books anyone tuning in (laughs) even yourself too tyler if you if you're ever curious i would say definitely read the original because they brought old man logan back at some point but if you want to like read I mean, read you, logan, but i think that goes into the, what the concept of is yeah. what is continuity anymore yeah. like harley yeah. quinn for example was a filler character in the batman the animated series but they liked her so much she yeah. worked away right being in canon or i can take this one step further um you're a transformers fan right yeah you remember um soundwave yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. You remember awesome. his cassette warriors? I'm sorry. Remember his cassette warriors? Oh, yeah. Well, that that's what I'm getting. That um, characters like Ravage, Laserbeak, mm. Ratbat, they're animalistic in their quote unquote robot form. Mm. Um. Whereas these ones are, well, they're they're animalistic, but in the comics they were, but they still spoke. Yeah. They just have to look like animals. Whereas yeah. in the, um, pretty much most of the uh, media, like Transformers, the Generation 1 series, they acted and sounded animalistic. So it really depends on what's the continuity we're looking for. Oh, I see. I mean, they kind of, even in the Michael Bay movies, they try to keep it like... Well, even then it was uh, depending on the situation. Whereas Ravage... Oh was true to his generation one counterpart whereas laser beak in those movie series was more accurate to the comics yeah and also um the other two i can't remember their names at the moment but they, they had the, the little other robots frenzy and uh rumble yeah i mean yeah, they looked like you they're um they're they're, they're the tiny standard they're mode tiny was robots. more humanoid yeah and I say robot mode because they're Cybertronians. Yeah. We're just called robot mode because it's easier. Right. No, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, but yeah, man, that was my that was my unnecessary deep dive was because I've, and, you know, I mean, I don't know if you find yourself doing that, but I, I often do that with a lot of things that I'm watching. I kind of <laughs> sometimes I'll like try to think of like a different approach would really just take away from the whole you know, like the whole episode or the whole thing that's going on. <laughs> I'm like, oh man, why am I doing that? <laughs> it's a fun rant. Um, it is. Yeah, but I, I um, yeah, I, I appreciate you taking the time to be on my show. Uh, of course. And, and having me on your show. Um, is there a release date on that one? Uh, yeah, it's actually one of my episodes. I released stuff for my um, phase five. Uh, oh, that's right. You have phase 
Yeah, phases. I like that. Yeah, it's easier to keep track of. Yeah. Um, you were my controversy episode. Right. Um, animation live action. And that'll be served as my first episode in November. Cool, cool. Yeah, that was fun. That was a fun It was one. fun. Appreciate you having me on there. And for those of you that don't know, I do a mini series within my podcast called The Controversy, where I compare things that are through if you're looking through a non-geek eyes, they're basically the same thing. If you're looking at a geek eyes, they're extremely different. You're Marvel versus DC. So you are um anime dubs versus subs. Mm-hmm. Your PlayStation versus your Xbox, those kind of things. Mm-hmm. Nice. Well said. Uh, actually, yeah, let's bring this home. Uh, where can where can people tune in to Geek Talk with Tyler? Currently I'm on Spotify, but I'm trying to branch out to other uh, podcast media platforms. But everything will be updated on my website, geektalkwithtyler.com. If you want to suggest an episode, would like to be on an episode, or were interested in buying some of my merch, then go to the contact page where you see the blue demon looking mascot sound check and you can contact me there. Awesome. Yeah. So be sure to check him out. Um, if they want to follow you on social media, I they have Facebook, you? I have Instagram and, and I also have LinkedIn. And it's geek talk with Tyler. Oh, uh, the podcast talk. name is yes. Okay. There you go, folks. Thank you for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Again, if you did, uh, be sure to subscribe. Uh, Ring that notification bell so that way you can keep up with all the current new releases. Uh, If you are watching on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel so you can check out uh, previous episodes as well as some of my art content. Um, Slowly but surely, I'm getting them out there. Um, But yeah, thanks for tuning in. And uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.